So let's go look and see what load scene requires. So let's go to the Unity manual, and we need to look up scene manager load scene. So this will be the name of the path, the index of the scene in the build setting to load, or the mode. So it looks like what I can do is just na load in, in parentheses, which thing we're going to do, and then I have to set a particular load scene. So we don't want it to be overlapping, so it looks like we need this load scene mode single. So my scene is just called sample scene. It's probably a terrible name, but oh well. And then I need to do load scene mode dot single. I'm going to save this and then try running it again. So one last thing I need to do in order to run this is, once we have this collision, I need to set, I need to set at and to true. So it actually runs this code. So once I have this basic GUI, I need to actually make sure that it runs. So I need to make sure that this section here, this on trigger 2D actually finishes and does this on GUI event. And I'm gonna do that through this at end event, at end variable. The at end variable needs to be set to true. Now, the other thing I have to do is make sure I don't destroy my own object or else it won't run this code. So I'm no longer gonna want these two pieces. So if I save this and run it, and then run into the thing, so now I have the play again and quit happening. I hit play again, that does work. Quit doesn't function right now because I'm not a standalone game. Quit doesn't uh, terminate the t application when you're actually editing it. But this piece of code here, the application quit, will function if it's a standalone group. So what is this stuff doing? I should probably take a look at this. So this is creating something called a group. It's kind of like um, a container that'll contain both buttons and the label, actually. The end group the you win thing, perhaps I might want to check and see which player actually won here, playing again, and quit. So it's creating a label, which is just text that I can show. It's got a button, which ha is the thing I can click on at the top, which is gonna run this sample scene loading, so basically restarting the game. And this button quit is going to quit here. The numbers in here have to do with the size of the buttons themselves and where you're going to locate them. So neither one is at uh, changing its X position from its overall group. This is the Y position. So notice this is at 0, 20 down from that, 70 down. And then all of these are going to be 100 wide, 20 tall, 50 tall, 50 tall. So that's what all these numbers mean. And then these are the labels that go on them. And if it's true, which means it's been clicked on, then it runs the code within here. So the other thing I noticed is that my players keep moving when I'm done. What I kind of like to do is to set their velocity back to zero so that it's not constantly running in the background. That seems a little weird. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go get those two particular objects and set their velocity to zero. So a way I can do that is I can actually do game object dot find. And find allows me to use the names of the objects. So in my example, it was player cyan. This thing here, whatever this name is. So I can go find it by name and do something with it. So now that I have that object, I can go get its rigid body. Get component. 
rigid body 2D. That thing, the rigid body, is the thing that has the physics, so it has a velocity. And I'm going to just clear this out. So I'm just going to make it a new vector too, which basically means set it to be something that has zeros in all of its spots. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the player pink. So the idea is basically set their velocities to zero, go run this code. All right. So now notice that they don't move. So I play again. All right. If I wanted to be really stringent, I could change this uwin text based on an if statement. So check and see which of the players ran into the wall and keep track of that. And then I could change this label. But I'm going to leave that for you to do if you want to. I could also do scoring. Uh, if I can find out which player actually ran into the wall, I can give the other player a uh, variable that has a score inside of it. So both of those things could be uh, pieces I add into this. It's not required, but those are possibilities. So hopefully that gets you through the beginnings of your light cycle game.